What's up, Core Reporters, and welcome back to my channel. Guys, I don't even know how to keep up with the latest drama involving former Teen Mom 2 star Kaylin Lowry. Please bring her back to the show because this drama is just wild. It's uh, it's everlasting. I feel like I talk about her more than the people who are actually on the show because she is just bringing it constantly and for free, you guys, free 99. So now in this latest kind of like um, situation involving her, leaked text messages have just appeared on Instagram by her former friend, Darcy, who I will remind you is the same girl that exposed Kale for wanting to send her third baby daddy, Chris Lopez, and I love Brianna De Jesus sweatshirt. Like you remember, Chris had Kale in a hardcore chokehold, you guys. She was obsessed with that man for many, 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 many years. And she just did not want to let him go when she heard that he was shooting a podcast or whatever with Brianna De Jesus and whatnot. She decided to go after him. So there's the 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 t-shirt right there. Um, then you see like the text messages between Darcy and Kale, where Darcy actually, when she was Kale's friend, she did a good thing by discouraging Kale from sending this to Chris, because imagine the way she would have gotten dragged for that. So when Darcy put that out there, um, Kale initially denied it. She went to Brianna. She said, Brianna, don't do this. It's not true. I didn't make it. I didn't make it. And then come to find out, oh yeah, I did. And then she comes up with an excuse. Apparently Kale didn't make it. Her friend was so interested in this drama that she spent her own money to produce this. Please. I don't believe that story for a second. Anyway, now, Darcy is back with a vengeance because Kale talked poorly about Chris Lopez on this week's episode of Baby Mama's No Drama. I recap the episode. Make sure to go watch that on my channel. It's the episode where I said uh, in the title that Elijah and his father are fighting and it's because of Kale, because that's what Kale mentioned in the podcast. But not only that, she also accused her ex, Chris, of being capable of red rumming her. And then she also had very, very heavily implied that his girlfriend might be capable of seriously harming or even ending the lives of her children. There's a lot there. Okay, you guys. And so obviously Chris should be incredibly upset by the podcast episode and his girlfriend should be incredibly upset by the episode. But the person acting out and firing all these shots is not related to Chris, is not sleeping in his grandma's attic with him, Bumping uglies, making new children. Um, it's a woman that's not even met Chris. It's the Darcy girl. And Darcy, this is not a shot at you, baby girl. I am loving the tea that you were spilling, okay? It's just interesting that you're the one speaking out about this, okay? So let's take a look at what it is that she had to say on her Instagram account, shall we? She said, there's no effing way that Kale is out here really comparing someone who treats her two kids better than her to a woman who stood by a booze. So Darcy's saying that Chris Lopez's new girlfriend, the initial member of his harem, treats his kids better than Kale treats her own kids. Those are very, very serious allegations, Darcy. Whew. Burnt my uh, tongue on those allegations. They're they're very fiery. Uh, and then, you know, they're saying that Kale stood by abuse, which I will say is not fair. She, if she was a victim of it, she did not stand by it. It just took her a long time to break the cycle and get out of the situation, which is very par for the course. I always say on this channel, it takes victims of a BUSC seven times on average to leave. So, you know, staying does not mean that you stand by it or that you're a bad like mom or whatever. I don't think that's fair to say. So let's continue on with Darcy's post. Tell me, I didn't hear that SHIT. I watched her with the boys and the other one being Kale with the boys by a webcam or what? Because you've never met either of these people. Just saying. Um, and she's a way better fit for them than Kale. Whew, that burns. Guess who came to Kale Lowry's defense? None other than her Coffee Convos podcast co-host, Lindsay Chrisley. Allegedly, right? This is a very subtle post that she made that Kale reposted shortly after Darcy made her own post. And she's rolling her eyes in the car saying, jealousy looks terrible on you, yet you continue to wear it. I don't know if this necessarily applies to Darcy. I don't know what Kale has that Darcy or quite literally anybody would be jealous of. Can you name anything? Is it money? Because I don't think anyone would be jealous of the money if they know that it comes with all that Kale's life comes with. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't say that at all. So it, it's I, I, I'm not convinced that this is necessarily pointed towards Darcy, but Darcy seems to think so, because guess what? 
She said this, since Chris took the high road and I didn't, am I wrong to assume that was a shot at me? And this is the only thing that Kale really posted yesterday that could be seen as somewhat shady. Well, I assumed it. So y'all ready for some screenshots? And this is where she goes ballistic. She presses a nuclear missile button here. Um, or are you, are y'all um, going to say I texted myself or another friend texted me, which is what people were initially saying when she spilled the beans about Kale and this I love Brianna t-shirt. So now she says, let's play. And let's see how she wants to play, right? Bah, 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 bah. But before she releases the screenshots, what does Darcy say? It's funny how people are coming. Uh, uh, actually, no. She did this first. She put out this image first. Okay, so it's her um, talking to Kale about... where? Where's that screenshot? Oh, don't tell me I lost that screenshot. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, Lord have mercy. StreamYard, why would you do this to me? How dare you? How dare you? Sorry, you guys. I had this image ready and primed because I shot this video a second ago, actually. This is the second time that I'm shooting this video and whatnot. I'll give you a second to let you digest these images that you're seeing on the screen. But um, yeah, so basically what happened was that she posts a conversation that she has with Kale about um, baby clothes. And this conversation was had on August 19th of 2022. Kale was supposedly quite pregnant, heavily pregnant with her fifth child there, as confirmed by Kale herself on uh, last week's episode of her podcast, where she told her guests that um, she was watching their show, The Kupo Sisters, when she was in the hospital giving birth to her child. She didn't say which child, but guess what? The Kupo Sisters debuted in 2022. Her youngest claimed child, publicly claimed child, is Creed, and he was born in 2020, two years prior to this show coming out. So there you go, fifth child confirmed. Anyway, um, they, these were clothes for the said mystery fifth child. So Darcy is in the blue bubbles, okay? So she's saying size zero to six, right? Kale says, oh my God, stop, that's so cute. Darcy goes, okay, but is it the right size? There are only two options. Kale says, yeah, that works. And then um, on the right side here, you'll see Kale acknowledging having received the gift. P.S. Just open the package. Thank you. Darcy says, don't thank me. Was it the right one? It's the one from the pic I sent you. And then Kale says, yes, hold on. I'll send a pic. And so she sends a photo of uh, the package that she received from her beloved internet companion, Darcy. And so Darcy, and posting these screen grabs of her conversation with Kaylin, she says, um, first, let's put this to rest. And y'all could stop asking if there's another one, as in another child. And no, this wasn't for Creed but him nor Lux were ever left out, as in she was buying gifts for Kale's other publicly claimed children, Creed and Lux. But this gift was not for them. It was for the fifth child that she had in November of 2022, okay? So let's get into after what, what happened after she posted that. People started uh, flaming her, saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. We don't like tea. We don't like drama, even though we follow you and what other reason is there for following you? You know what I mean? So D uh, Darcy responds to the heat. She says, it's funny how people are coming for me. Talking about I switched up. Now, nah, the switch up was when she threatened me with attorneys. After that, any after that, any loyalty I had for her died. I owed, I owed that person nothing. And Darcy had been talking about this for a while. Kale threatening her with lawyers, which is uh, something that Kale does to her friends all the time. You know, that's probably why she was able to keep this mystery fifth baby a secret for so long. Anyone who dared count to five on their fingers or anything like that must have been hit with a lawyer's notice. <laughs> so let's get back to more of the text messages that Darcy shared, shall we? So um, here is kind of like the overview of all of them. I have split them into individual conversations just so it's easier for all of us to read them, of course. Um, so let's go. So here, um, in this first quadrant, no, this is not a quadrant. Quadrants are four. What do you call it when it's tr three? Trident? No, that's gum. In this first little block here, um, you see Kale calling her initial baby daddy, Joe Rivera, ugly. That's not nice, Kale. And then you're going to see her talking about her drama with Lindsay Chrisley. And then here on the bottom, even more drama follows with Lindsay Chrisley. And this time it's actually between Lindsay Chrisley and uh, Kale's baby mama, new drama podcast host, V Rivera, who is married to her inaugural baby daddy, Joe Rivera. 
<laughs> not in not girl. <laughs> mm. All right, let's get into it. So here, Lucifer is Kale. That is what Darcy changed Kale's name to in her tech, in her phone after they fell out. Okay. So you see Darcy in the blue bubbles sending Kale screenshots of Kale and Chris in the car when Chris appeared in that episode of Teen Mom 2, flipping us all off. So rude, so nasty, and so rude. And um, the article, like kind of title that you're seeing there is Chris talking about his child's unique name. Uh, unique being the word true misspelled, okay? Um, and so Darcy, in sending the screenshot, says, just look at these. And the camera responds saying, they've always been random hair, pat, he's. She must have been doing voice to text because I don't know what this means. And then um, Kale says, Joe is hideous. Now, Miss Girl, not you randomly coming for your baby daddy's looks. Doesn't your son kind of look like your his father? Don't children look like their parents? So why would you, with a straight face, call your baby daddy hideous? It's just so mean, so rude, and so what the heck. And I'm sorry, when I put up this picture, they look like people who, in my eyes, are in the same league. Okay. I don't see one as being, you know, beautiful and the other as being unattractive. To me, I would think, oh, this is a normal couple that is like similarly matched in looks. Okay. And you know what the gag is with that? Without getting too mean, of course. The gag is this. You two are similarly matched in looks and only one of you has spent lots of time pain, energy, and money on plastic surgery. Only one of you has gotten lipo like three times and a tummy tuck. The other hasn't. Meanwhile, you're the same size, right? Kale has stomach lipo, stomach tummy tuck, <laughs> stomach tummy tuck, come on now. Um, she's gotten arm lipo and chin lipo. Kale also gets Botox and she gets fillers. She got her butt stuffed. But did that did that elevate you? You know, not to be rude, but come on now. Like, how how do you spend all this time, energy, on money just to still, you know? I can't. Let's move on because this is just ridiculous. You know what I mean? It's just ridiculous. The nerve, the audacity of some people. You know what I mean? Like, wow. Honestly, that's really rude. I wonder what led prompted her to say that because in the images that uh, Darcy had shared it to her Instagram page. She had sent Kale a photo of like an article with Chris Lopez using an image of Kale and Chris. So Kale must have resp been responding to something earlier. Maybe uh, Darcy also sent uh, an article about Joe, but for Kale to just call him hideous is just wow. Especially when, like I said, when you look at photos of the two of them together, do you think that one is more stunning the other than the other? That like, you do you think, wow, how did he land her? Or how did she land him? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know? Absolutely not. I will admit, though, when I see photos of Joe and uh, V, it's a, uh, you do go, huh? She seems to, you know, really be into um, her appearance and whatnot. Um, she really loves, like, you know, a lot of makeup. She loves, like, of really flashy clothes and this and that. And he's more low key and stuff. You know what I mean? And she's really seems to be into like health and fitness and whatnot. Um, so that's the only time that you go, huh? You know, like that's interesting, the two of them together, but Joe and Kale, no. So um, Kale also tweeted Darcy. I still wonder how V gets what for that. She posts, I love this man and crap. And I'm like, huh? How? She couldn't just like let it breathe at like, oh, I don't think this man's attractive. I don't know how I had a kid with him. Now she has to go on and bring her podcast co-host into it and wonder how she could be attracted to her own husband. Maybe she's attracted to his stability. The fact that he's not the neighborhood breeder. You know, he doesn't treat his reproductive system like a gerbil. That's attracted to some people, Kale. You know, how long have they been together? Having a nice life. No PFA is being filed frivolously. Uh, no cheating going on. Speaking of cheating, Kale, did you not cheat on a guy named Jordan to get with Joe, this man that you say is hideous, and you don't understand how V gets it whipped for? Hmm. Funny. 
not funny, haha, but funny, weird. Okay. Um, it was just so unnecessary. And I do wonder how um, Joe and V feel looking at this. And I wouldn't be surprised if Isaac comes across uh, this content as well. Remember, the child is what, 14 years old? He's on the internet and everything. Like, um, she has to be careful. She really has to be careful about what she texts this, that, and the other. And so her friend Darcy, I'm telling you, Darcy, like, she might seem like she's really shady now, releasing all this information and whatnot, even the I Love Brianna shirt. But one thing that's been consistent. When she would text with Kale back when they were friends, Darcy was a real friend to her. First of all, she told Kale, don't send that stupid I love Brianna shirt. You're going to look thirsty as hell and obsessed with that man. And now here Kale is talking poorly about her own child's father, right? And like, how, how could his wife be attracted to him? Um, and what does her friend say? She doesn't laugh with her. She says, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, which is just a very nice and neutral way to end this immature conversation. Kudos to you, Darcy, on that. Um, let's continue on to the rest of the messages, shall we? So now in the other leak messages, mind you, these were from last year. They're nothing recent, right? Because the two of them fell out. This would be around the time that Kale was pregnant with uh, baby number five. So now in this next text message exchange, you see Lindsay communicating with, um, with Kale, I believe it is. So Kale sends Darcy the text messages from her conversations with her podcast co-host, Lindsay Chrisley. So it's a lot to take in. It's going to be hard to read it. So I will make sure to um, get every last detail for you guys. Okay. So let's get into it. So in that first bubble, Lindsay is saying, uh, sorry, who is saying this? I'm having a hard time deciphering it myself. You guys help me in the comment section, okay? Um, I feel like I'm like lost. Okay, so Lindsay is saying in the gray bubbles and Kayla's in the blue bubbles, okay? So Lindsay says, you can call me whatever you want to at the end of the day. I might have been a whore sometimes. I am a biatch, but I've been a good friend to you. Oh, not the girls fighting. And then Kale says, nobody says those things. And then, <laughs> so court, so court, so Kurt. And uh, Lindsay responds with another wall of text. This all stems from baby mamas. How that was uh, gone about V trying to flex on me, biatch, come on. She might be from Jersey, but I'm from where Jesus lost his sandals and I'm no longer playing with her. What does that mean? I'm from where Jesus lost his sandals. I didn't even know Jesus lost his sandals. I thought they were like strapped on pretty tight, like gladiator sandals. What did someone do when he lost the sandals? Did they put it up on eBay? What does this mean? This is crazy. Okay. Like just so corny, but okay. Um, and then um, Lindsay also continued on to say, couldn't even text you about it because she's your sellout business partner. Ouch. So V was hurting when Kale announced that she was going to be launching another podcast. Remember, Kale first started off in the podcast space with the Coffee Convos podcast alongside Lindsay Chrisley before she went on to produce Baby Mama's No Drama with uh, V Rivera, who is now married to Kale's initial baby daddy. And so obviously via this text message exchange, you see that Lindsay was absolutely furious about the situation. She was dragging V, threatening her. I'm from where Jesus lost his sandals, biatch, <laughs> whatever that means. Um, and she and uh, calling her a sellout, which I don't understand, um, but I digress. Let's continue. Um, Lindsay also said, literally would go to the end of the earth for you. And all you can say to me is, quote, you're effing weird. And are you deranged? Well, if you think those things, I don't F with deranged folks. Ah, wild how dismissive Kale was to that girl, it seems like. Um, so Darcy uh, tells Kale that she called Lindsay a whore. And so Kale says, no, I didn't call her a whore. And then Darcy sends a 31 second audio clip, which obviously we could not listen to in a screen grab. And Kale responds with, I've got three baby daddies four now. I can't call anyone a whore. And um, that concludes that text message exchange. So Kale then goes to Darcy. And I think this was, I think Darcy actually posted this out of order. I think this happened before Kale sent the proof because in this exchange, Kale goes to Darcy with the tea. She's like, you ready for the drama today? 
And so Darcy goes, Kale, what happened? Kale says, Lindsay's been crying and mad and upset about my new podcast that I did it behind her back and didn't tell her. She won't record for Coffee Combos this week. So why did you do it behind her back, Kale? Why couldn't you talk to her about it, I wonder? You know, like, is Lindsay not an approachable person? Is she like an explosive person? And that's why you felt like you couldn't like go to her as a friend. Um, why is this fun, like tea for fodder? Is this not like a business you're running? This girl got you in the podcast space and this is how you repay her. And now all your money comes from podcasts too. Like I would be a lot nicer to someone who hooked me up like that, but I digress. So um, Darcy responds with laughing emojis and says, are you effing kidding me? And then Kale says that Lindsay said, if I cared, I would make time for a phone call. Well, it's true. Why don't you make time for a phone call? I know you've got Bluetooth in your car in that Wawa parking lot. Ooh. Ooh. And then Darcy responds with, bro, I can't, LMAO. And then Kale says, she said that she's getting lawyers involved. And I hope Kale is not trying to be like laughing at her for getting lawyers involved because guess what? This is business at the end of the day. And there might've been a non-compete clause. So it is reasonable to get lawyers involved. Um, meanwhile, Kale gets lawyers involved with her friends for nothing, right? When business is not involved. So it's interesting how she can go ahead and do that, but she will mock her friends for doing the same thing, isn't it? So this is the one exchange between Darcy and Kale where I go, uh, Darcy wasn't being a great friend here, like just laughing at the situation instead of like guiding Kale. Like, listen, she feels hurt. You did her wrong. Like, you know, why not, you know, get on the phone with her or whatever about the situation? Um, but, you know, I get it. When you have a friend like this who's always in drama, sometimes you just want to laugh and keep it moving. So Where's the last little exchange here? Do I have it all? Do I have it all? Oh, I think that's it. So those are um, the conversations that were released from uh, Kale's former friend turned arch nemesis Darcy. Now, Kale calling her um, inaugural baby daddy, Joe Rivera hideous, wondering how V Rivera can get wet for him. I'm still stunned by that. Like, I really feel like the audacity, the nerve, the the everything, like how, like, what is the point of that? Like, and I find it so funny because she'll always be so high up on her high horse on her podcast talking about, oh, people talk crap about people because they don't feel happy in their lives. They don't this, they don't that. And you're doing so much better. Is that what's going on with you, Kale? You don't feel happy in your roller coaster life where even your latest baby daddy's family can't stand you either? Elijah and his dad aren't talking anymore because you are just out here um, popping out babies left, right, and center like it's the only thing you've got to do um, all day. Meanwhile, Joe's been with the same woman for like over a decade. He's got a stable house, stable life. He's got a big real estate portfolio. You don't. Is that why you're talking crap about him? Like what do his looks have to do with anything? He is the only stable force in your child's life. Like, isn't that sad? I feel like that is sad. Like, Joe and V truly are the only piece of peace itself and stability that Isaac has had his whole life. While Kale has been running around left, right, and center from strip mall parking lot to Wawa parking lot, hooking up with random men and getting impregnated by them. And then to see Kale laughing at her business partner, the girl who got her in the podcast space in the first place, the only way she's really making a lot of money right now, Lindsay Chrisley, laughing at how she went behind Lindsay's back to uh, put together the Baby Mama's No Drama podcast with V Rivera. Why did she need to go behind Lindsay's back? I thought they were besties. Right? I thought there was trust there and everything. Why did she feel the need to go behind Lindsay's back? Like there was never any explanation for that. I wonder if Lindsay feels a little played now, dumb even, going on Instagram, like sub, sub, uh, what do you call it? It's usually subtweeting when it's Twitter. What is it? Subgramming this Darcy girl, which caused all of these floodgates to be open. You're going in defense of this girl, Kale. Meanwhile, Kale laughs at you behind your back. Kill goes behind your back to forge business deals and then laughs that you're distressed and that you're getting lawyers involved. That's funny. Thank you, Lindsay, for that video because, who Lord. And thank you, Kale, for reposting that video because it opened up the floodgates for all of these receipts to be dropped. Darcy, in a few Instagram story slide, confirmed again, baby no number five. 
the beef between um, Lindsay and Kale and how Kale really feels about Joe and how, you know, she's like, ew, V, what are you talking about? You're in love with this man. I'm like, oh my God, that's so weird. Like, I would feel so weird talking to you after that, you know? Talk about my man, my man, my man. Meanwhile, you're gagging in your brain or something because you think my man is hideous. I don't know. I'd have a hard time opening up about anything like that with you again. And I'm sorry, but every time I look at this picture, I'm like, really, girl, the audacity. You spent all that money on plastic surgery. And just for, you know what, let's end this video here. We're going to end it here, you guys. What do you think about all that tea? Darcy, girl. Keep it coming. Bye, guys.